Hi. Welcome, everyone. Seeing some more familiar faces from earlier in the day, which is nice. Barbara, Michael, um, I can't see everyone on my screen, but um, yeah, nice to see everyone. Um, yeah, so th this is only a half hour session, um, so um, I won't waffle on too much. Um, one of the things we wanted to do as part of the festival was to showcase some of the partnerships that we've um, made and formed um, over the course of the programme. And one of those has been with the Food Foundation, who um, Zoe is joining us from today, who I'll hand over to in a minute. And we've got three of the Children's Rights of Food um, Young Ambassadors with us. So we've got Janai, um, Safi and uh, Dev, who will all introduce themselves in a moment as well. Um, the idea that there's not going to be much of um, a chance for kind of a Q&A and things, but it's really just to give a bit of an overview of um, some of the work that we've been doing together. Um, a number of the um, young food ambassadors I've worked quite closely with, um, specifically in Lancashire, sadly, none of those can join us today, but um, it's really good that the three who are joining um, are able to share um, some of the things that we've worked together on over um the last i can't even remember how long it'll be now but i'm sure so we can um tell you a little uh, bit of a brief history of where the right to food campaign um came from uh so yeah enough for me i'm gonna hand over to zoe uh zoe will do a brief introduction and then i'm gonna kind of have a little chat with um Safi, Dev and Janai about their involvement um, and we'll put links in the chat to kind of the um, Right to Feed website and any other information that may be relevant and um, you're welcome to contact um, me after um, this kind of uh, session if you've got any more questions or want to, uh, I'm sure um, those ambassadors who have Twitter, et cetera, will also um, post their kind of um, uh, Twitter hang handles into the chat as well. Um, but yeah, over, over to you, Zoe. Hi, yeah, uh, thanks, Ben. Am I on mute? No. Good. Um, so I'm Zoe, I'm the Children's Right to Food Project Manager at the Food Foundation. So the Food Foundation's a charity that's been going for about five years and um, is quite kind of policy facing, government facing, but with the intention of changing um, the food system so that uh, everyone across the UK can have access to um, affordable good food. Uh, we specifically work on children's food obviously um, and um, the children's right to food campaign was really born out of um, uh, the children's future food inquiry which the food foundation undertook in between 2018 and 2019 which was a kind of year-long investigation into children's food but which really try to systematically and directly hear from children and young people about their experiences of food and how it affects their lives. So not only in school, but also when they go out with their friends, when they get a takeaway, when they're at home, um, et cetera. And we heard from uh, young people all across the country who um, told us their opinions and their experiences, and we reported it in our, in our inquiry and uh, fed that back to policymakers in the media. Out of that, um, really, the Children's Right to Food campaign was born. And some of the young people who were brave enough to come forward and talk to us about their uh, views and opinions formed our, what we call, Young Food Ambassador team, uh, three of which are obviously here today. We've got now about 20 young food ambassadors across the country who are between the ages of 14 and 20. Um, and really, they're kind of leading the campaign to call on government to tackle children's food insecurity specifically and also inequalities in childhood obesity. Um, the kind of um, blueprint for this is really the children's right to food charter, which is a kind of vision of how uh, these young people that I work with um, 
want to see policy action um, and are asking politicians to take notes. So I can share the link for the Children's Right to Food Charter afterwards, but it's kind of our go-to of what we are campaigning about altogether. Um, and the kind of ask on there range from a whole kind of different spread of things. So this could be uh, looking at the entitlement for free school meals, but also things around um, uh, advertising and the affordability of healthy food and things like that. So it's really kind of like a way of government to to, to have some solutions that are that are there in front of their nose, and they they could really be kind of an act, acting on them um, if they wanted to make a big difference for young people and children across the UK. So a lot of the ambassadors have been. I've had their own experiences of some of the things that we've been campaigning about. So this might be that they've, you know, benefited from free school meals or that they've kind of been stigmatized from um, not necessarily being able to afford the food that others can. And um, they've kind of brought their own experiences or the experiences of their friends or, or peers or um, people at school and have kind of been channeling that into their campaigning and gives them the kind of determination and will to uh, speak to policymakers and really hold them to account. So I guess since the inquiry was published in 2019, when the Young Food Ambassadors took it to number 10 and spoke to the then um, uh, Children's Minister, we um, have been hit by a kind of global, <laughs> a global phenomenon, which has obviously changed all of our lives, um, which is obviously the COVID pandemic, but obviously, but it's been huge for young people um, and especially um, I've kind of seen the effect that it's had on the young people I work with um, directly that you know they've had to miss school and their friends and exams and they've missed out on sometimes good nutritious meals and free school meals so it's been a really tough year but obviously we've been seeing some some positives coming out of that as well and that's been that the ambassadors have kind of been really strong in their campaigning and have um, had the opportunity to make a big impact. They began the pandemic by uh, recording a set of podcasts, which we recently just found out have been nominated for a Guild of uh, Travel Writers Award. Um, and these podcasts kind of talked about their experiences of difficulty in food access during lockdown at the beginning of the pandemic specifically, where they shared their stories and, and also kind of interviewed others that um, had different experiences, but also kind of a varied um, yeah, a varied kind of look at what was happening across the UK in terms of food security. Um, they've been working with Marcus Rashford on his End Child Food Property campaign um, and sharing their experiences with him. They've also met many times with policymakers, so a couple of times with uh, the now Children's Minister Vicky Ford, also the leader of the opposition Keir Starmer, and various times with Department for Education officials to really talk to them about their their charter, their views and their experiences to feed into the policy that's directly affecting their lives when it comes to food. Um, and thanks to really um, their <laughs> tenacity and passion, they their voices have kind of be, become louder and um, we do feel that they're being listened to. So um, of course, we've seen some good policy change this year and we're hoping that um, as time goes on, we'll be able to tick more of those arse off our charter um, to improve children's food and nutrition across the UK. But um, I'm really glad that, yeah, we're able to share Janai and Saffron and Dev, uh, Dev's um, opinions in, today. And yeah, and so I won't, I won't bang on any longer and I'll hand over to them because they'll do a much better job of, of telling you about what they're, what they're campaigning for. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's all from me. But obviously, if there's any questions, happy to um, answer them. Or Ben can send them over to me and um, put put them in, put me in touch with with anyone that's got any questions about the campaign. Over to you. Sorry, that was a great introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> no worries. And just echoing um, sort of some of your comments that yeah, working alongside um, the ambassadors has been really inspiring for me as well and some of the things that they've achieved has has been brilliant and also kind of how they've been kind of empowered and uh, grown over the last um number of years has has been good to see as well um so my first um it's going to be quite informal for the next 15 minutes and 
I realised we might run slightly over, um, but um, just for the likes of Safran, Janai and Dev, if you can keep your sort of answers to my informal questions relatively brief, just in case people do need to leave at half five, I realise some people might have been um, at the festival um, all day and um, be wanting to go for the tea or whatever um, after the call finishes. But um, I thought I'd go to Saffron first and just ask um, how and why you got involved um, in the campaign and the inquiry. Sure. So, hi, I'm Saf. I'm 16 and I'm from Portsmouth in the south of England. And I got involved in this because I was fed up with going downstairs and seeing my parents really struggling, even though they both worked, or at least at least my dad worked at the time, really struggling to afford basic food. And we would just eat a lot of pasta. So I realised that this isn't a universal experience and nor should it be a universal experience. So I found these people and figured, why not make a change? Great, thanks, Afron. And I'll go to Dev next with the same question. How and why you got involved in the campaign, Dev? Thank you, Ben. Um, hi, my name's Dev. I'm 16 from Leicester. I also serve as Leicester's youth MP currently, and I'm also a food ambassador for the Food Foundation, um, like Ben said. Um, a reason why I got involved with the Food Foundation, which was back in like 2018, it was like a year before, uh, yeah, it was it was during the Children's Future Food Inquiry. So um, I'm on free school meals. And around that time, I was what, 14, didn't really think poverty existed in the UK, didn't really think it was a thing, didn't really know it was a thing. Then the Food Foundation came along, kind of educated at a workshop in Leicester, said that in your area, over 40% of kids actually live in poverty, which was for a 14 year old, mind blowing, like what? People live in poverty in my area. You growing up with these people, they don't live in poverty. Um, they kind of explained it, broke down the barriers. And I had this amazing chance to get involved. And I think giving young people voice is what it's all about. And they actually gave young people like me and Saf and um, Janai a voice for young people across the country in our position. And that's really why I got involved, because I wanted to change how free school meals look like for other kids across the country. Per perfectly put, as always. And um, moving on to Janai with the same question, how and why you got involved? Hi, um, I'm Janai. I'm 19 and I'm from Huddersfield, also Yorkshire, last born and bred. And um, growing up, I came from a single parent household. So similar to South, it was always kind of like a struggle. You would see certain things and you would just think it's normal. And then it wasn't until I did NCS when I left school and we had someone come in and actually talk about food insecurity. And me and a fellow um, food ambassador, Rabia, we were just like, we could relate to this and we could relate to that. And everything was just like, well, we've experienced this and we've seen it. And it was just like, no, it's not right. So we really, we really wanted to make a change and stood, wanted to stand for something. That's great. Thanks, Janai. Um, and I think that's sort of something that I hear so often as well, is the kind of poverty, food poverty for many young people um, is almost sort of normalised and it's only once you start having these conversations that um and and we'll move on to in a little while kind of what the ambassadors think of kind of public perception and whether things have changed over the last year but i remember young people i work with in uh blackburn with darwin who um were the, some of the highest levels of um child poverty who never realized until they got involved in um, the campaign and the inquiry that they lived in poverty. Because if 80% of people in your school were receiving free school meals, um, it becomes normalised when it, when it shouldn't be. Um, 
but yeah, I, um, on a more positive note, um, I just thought, again, if we could, if each of the three ambassadors, I'll go to Dev first, um, either something you think you've achieved or one of the key sort of inspiring moments um, from the last few years while she's been um, involved in the campaign. Dev. Thank you. Um, I'll separate this question into two bits. So something that I think has actually happened from the inquiry, I'll go first. So um, with what actually happened at the inquiry, firstly, we delivered recommendations, a charter written by young people um, of what we thought was wrong with the food system to 10 Downing Street, which is surreal with Dame Emma Thompson, who is our ambassador, is still our ambassador. Um, Jana was there. Um, and we went to 10 Downing Street, delivered our charter at the heart of government. That was amazing. We also, that same day, got to speak to then Children Minister uh, Nadim Zahawi. And that day, media really took it up. They really tried to understand what food poverty was. Um, I think what the inquiry did, it really laid the groundwork to help media and people in Westminster actually understand what the issue is with food poverty right from the ground and then of course lately we've had the work of Marcus Rashford which really took it further and was a catalyst um and the second thing which is like some great achievements have actually come out from this so we've seen free school meals they've extended throughout the holiday after a lot of campaigning more money given to families and children for food and essentials the government actually committed to making the holiday activity and food program available to all children across England at Easter, summer and Christmas, which was crazy. The government also ended up publishing a new obesity strategy which committed to banning junk food advertising on television before 9 p.m. and something which I had a hand on which was online. I wrote an online I wrote an, um, open letter to Matt Hancock and we actually managed to recently get the government in the Queen's speech to commit to an online junk food advertising ban to young people. Um, and lastly, in the obesity, obesity strategy, which is about stopping supermarkets from putting deals of unhealthy food and placing them right next to the counter. And then also in Marcus Rashford's strategy about the healthy start voucher and how that helps children, which has now increased. So that's been a lot of big changes this year, I think. Um, and I really think our inquiry helped lay the foundation and inform Westminster about what really was the problem from a young person's perspective. Great, thanks, Dev. I couldn't agree more. I'll go to um, Janai next. So, um, yeah, an achievement or an inspiring moment since you became involved? Um, yeah, just bouncing off of Dev's. Um, from when I started being a food ambassador, I really wanted to um, kind of get people to like know about it and be more aware about it and to like stop the stigmatism. And I feel like that was really, really apparent with Marcus Rashford and when we were working with him, because just on social media, I was seeing like pages and sites and just people talking about it. That you would not expect to speak about it. So that, that was like a really good moment. And just like seeing how the media is taking it up, seeing how people are saying, well, this isn't right. What are the government doing? And especially during um, the holidays as well, where restaurants were like giving free food to school kids and that was really good so yeah just the media's how the media picked it up was one of the biggest things for me thanks Janai and uh just quickly because I know you need to leave at half past but I was just you did touch upon obviously um the Marcus Rashford campaign um and I will come to you in a minute Saffron but I just wondered with, with you having to leave um, how do you think kind of public perception has changed over the last year given that food poverty has become um, kind of more mainstream and linked to that kind of what are your hopes for the future um, either as a campaigner or um, as part of um, the right to food campaign um i feel like the public's um position on it has changed just because now they really know what it is and it's not just poor people 
and people that are like scruffs and stuff are people that are just on free school meals it's about kids that are like just above like the free school meal bracket you know what i mean it's about those kids it's about like just kids being hungry in school and how it affects their concentration and i feel like people are having a lot of my empathy for it as well and not just judging so easily and for the future of course i would like to see um the government make a proper stand on these issues but i just want to keep the conversation going and not to let it die down keep the fuel in the gas or the, i don't know what the saying is but yeah that's great thanks tonight and if you are shooting off at half past then i don't get back to you just thank you so much for joining and thank you for having me work that you continue to do as well um but moving to saffron uh just stepping back a bit so first kind of uh what you feel you've achieved or an inspiring moment from um since you've been involved in the uh campaign so linking to what janai said I think my favourite part and the most inspiring part to me was seeing the flocks of people coming in just to support what we were doing. And I think simultaneously, while that's not a good thing because more people are aware that it is an experience, it shouldn't be so common. Um, it was really inspiring to me to see, especially the petition, which had so many signatures of people that truly took time out of their day to show that they cared. And I also loved meeting with the government like officials because it's the first time, I'm not sure if I speak for everyone here, but it's the first time where I felt like the adults in the room were actually listening and cared about what we had to say. And that was a truly magical, inspiring moment to actually be heard about what our issues are. Great, thanks, Saffron. Um, and yeah, um, back to you again with kind of the final uh, question, kind of, and it might link to what you've just mentioned, but your sort of hopes for the future or how you think perceptions have perhaps changed over the last year? Um, I think perceptions have already changed a fair bit because as Junai said, I was in that grey area well, I didn't quite qualify for free school meals, but my family was struggling to afford the lunches. Um, and I think, especially during COVID, um, that perception of that grey area and of the red area has changed immensely because now it's not a bad thing to need that extra helping hand to get you back up onto the ladder. And I really do appreciate how much the viewpoints on it has changed. But I also think that maybe we shouldn't have to have had the viewpoint at all, which is sad, but at least now it's not, oh, you're on free school meals, gross. It's now, oh, how can I help? Which is truly amazing to me. Thanks, Saffron. And just a final question for you both before I hand back to Zoe, just to kind of round off the session. Um, I know we're almost at half past, but um, given what's happened over the last year, if there was kind of one thing that government could do that they still haven't done, what would that be? I'll go to you, Dev, first. Can I just touch on the last question just really quickly? And I think, um, yeah. you know, um, about how public perceptions changed. Ben, you remember when we went to um, Westminster last time and we went to 10 Downing Street, when we were speaking to the media, it was basically convincing the media that food poverty exists. Like the whole day, it was just, does poverty really exist in the UK, the sixth largest economy? Does this really happen? We were like, yes, we've seen it. It happens in our schools. If you speak to people now, that 1.4 million figure, everyone knows it. No one doubts it. When I was speaking to the media after Marcus Rashford's U10, the media was wondering how we can help disadvantaged people even more, rather than questioning if 1.4 million people actually act, actually need the help. So um, I think that's like you can see the clear contrast. But also the story back to the question, which is about hopes for what the government would hopefully 
what we what we see from the government. I think my biggest hope, which is quite clear, that free school meals is extended to cover more disadvantaged children because we know not all young people who are disadvantaged are getting them. Um, it was part of Marcus Rashford's campaign last year, but it was never really addressed by the government fully. And lots of children still live in poverty, but aren't entitled to free school meals. And there's like this cliff edge where if you don't meet the thresh threshold, you just fall off a cliff. And um, there's not even any partial support. So hopefully if we expand the offer, there'll be less stigma around it. And we see more young people eating better, healthier food. Great, thanks, Dev. And just um, lastly, Saffron, if the government could do something more than they're already doing, what would that be? And then I'll hand back to Zoe. I think uh, one, obviously the government need to work on a lot, but I think the main thing for me is making sure that healthy food is both affordable and accessible to everyone and that the education is provided to know how to use these healthy ingredients and how to make them last. So they're not just a two day fridge item. So I think they need to be cheaper and the education levels need to be higher. Great, thank you. Um, I don't know why we only made this session half an hour because I'm sure the conversation <laughs> could just continue for the rest of the evening. Um, and I think it was you, uh, Safi, who um, said something about kind of magic and inspiration and kind of, um, yeah, this session. And I know some of the comments that have come in have been really positive. So just, yeah, thank you for me, um, for both of, well, the three of you who joined and shared the incredible work that you've done over the last few years. But I'll now hand back to Zoe just to kind of update on kind of what's next for um, the campaign, what's upcoming and what work the Food Foundation have planned. Obviously. Yeah, we, uh, thanks, Ben. I'll be very I'll be very brief because I know we're over time just to say that, yeah, I, I don't think I really need to say much more because these two of you are better than I do. So um, thanks very much, guys. I'm glad to hear that everyone's enjoyed listening to them. And obviously, I just posted in the chat um, our link to our newsletter if anyone wants to just keep in keep in touch with us and keep up with, with the work that we're doing. Um, obviously, we share things on Twitter, our, our social media handle handle is something that I'll put in the chat too. Um, I guess one of the things that's coming up really is to look at the, as Dev said, kind of keep banging the drum of, of um, the free school meal eligibility issue that we know that it's something that hasn't been addressed yet following on from National Food Strategy Part 1 and we're keen to make sure that um, we're not we're not kind of leaving that be. So I think our, con our work continuing this year will be to try and make the case for all of those children that are still missing out on free school meals. And, and the ambassadors are um, extremely practiced in doing this after a big campaign last year. So um, watch the space for, for the next few months because hopefully you'll be hearing from not me, but them, <laughs> and changing changing government's mind on um, the eligibility question of free school meals. So, yeah. Great. Thank you, Zoe. Um, I know we've ran slightly over, just, um, yeah, uh, Zoe, thank you, and um, colleagues at the Food Foundation who aren't here um, with you today, but who have also done a lot of work around this. A big shout out to them, uh, the ambassadors. Um, I've just posted a link in the chat to the Food Power Festival programme um, and earlier I did post a link as well to uh, the page on the Food Foundation website with more information on the Children's Right to Food campaign. Um, just two upcoming events specifically around lived experience that are coming up tomorrow. So the festival runs through till Thursday. Uh, 10 till 11 tomorrow we have a session looking at creative methods on how to empower and build resilience so we've got a number of um, I think three or four kind of campaigners creatives people with lived experience speaking on that um, so that's first thing in the morning and then we've made a short documentary about um, Penny Walters who is one of our um, kind of most prominent food power um, activists, if you will, uh, based um, up in Barker in Newcastle, 
Um, so we've got kind of an online premiere of her film um, tomorrow at 1 p.m. But there's also a lot more things happening, um, which you can find out about in the link that I've posted in the chat. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you for your comments. Do um, get in contact with myself or Zoe. I'll post my email in the chat before I leave um, if you have any more questions. But yeah, um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, thank you. Thanks, guys.